I got a very interesting reaction of one of my followers, Stephen Brown. And he told me that you can use a LED light emitting diode as a sensor. And he also told about the books of Forrest Mims. They are well known in the United States and everywhere. And he used that principle and I searched the World Wide Web and also found the schematic. I found documentation about Forrest Mims, uh, how he did that, etc. etc. So my idea was let me make a kind of proof of principle circuit. And I found on the World Wide Web by the way, on Wiki, uh, is that always um, reliable? I don't know, but okay, let's see. Let's uh, think that this is correct. These are the ultraviolet uh, ranges to uh, 320 up to 420 nanometers. That is radiation from the sun. It reaches the Earth for a big part. And this UVB, this is UVA, that also reaches the Earth, but for a very tiny part, and it causes skin tanning. So today I was busy looking for, say, uh, ultraviolet light sources in this frequency band. It was not very easy. I found finally uh, that there are typical lamps that, that radiate a lot of UV light, ultraviolet light. But um, there are also other, say, simple sources, and that are halogen lamps, arc lamps, and electric welding. So my idea was to take a white LED here, make an, an arc with two carbon rods. Here is one of them, and here is the other one. And when you connect these carbon rods to a voltage source, in this case 27 volt, and I have here a protective resistor of 2 ohms, that is in fact a 55 watt 12 volt normal automotive lamp, that is the protective resistor. So I can make a spark when touching um, these two lamps, sorry, these two uh, carbon rods, and then Hold them close to the uh, white LED and see what happens. I have connected the LEDs, the white LED, to the oscilloscope that's here. So, um, I think I have made a kind of ultraviolet sensor. Uh, this is only, say, very premature ID. More experiments are necessary, but I only wanted to say, show the proof of principle. And this is the circuit. Here is the carbon rod, the other carbon rod. Here's the white LED, it goes to the scope. The positive of the white LED goes to the input of the scope. The negative of the white LED goes to the ground of the scope. And here is that protective car lamp. It starts to light up when you touch both um, carbon rods. Let me at first show what happens. So the problem is I cannot uh, <coughs> show it the whole uh, uh, experiment in a very very precise way. So this is what happens. And as far as I know, there is a good amount of ultraviolet radiation radiation generated here in this spark. Of course, you need uh, a constant spark. That's a little bit problematic, but anyway. Here is the white LED again. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sparks close to this white LED. And I have put the oscilloscope on, on a good sensitivity. It's a very not very stable at the moment, so it takes some time to position the camera. Now I'm going to make these sparks close to the. Oh shit! Sorry for that. It 
that's not my ID. Close to the uh, white LED. When my camera drops down again, sorry for that. So now I'm making sparks close to the LED, approximately one centimeter or so. And you can surely see on the scope that uh, the LED is sensitive for the radiation caused by the sparks. So that's all what I wanted to show. Thanks for watching. It will not be a very long video. Our only first ideas about uh, how to make such a circuit. Uh, and of course I need uh, an amplificator, amplification unit to which the LED is connected. But this is a proof of principle circuit and it surely works and shows that such a white LED is sensitive for, uh, for light. And I think especially for um, ultraviolet light. I'm not sure because also visible light is generated by the spark. But I want to show that when I use a, a normal lamp like this here. This is a LED lamp by the way. And hold it close to that white LED. Nothing is happening. So it does not match with the spectrum that the white uh, LED can detect. And now I use an incandescent lamp, also close to the LED, and you see nothing. So it means that only, say, certain frequencies in the nanometer range have this effect. Do it again. Always fun. When I have time, I'm going to elaborate this circuit much better. So, thanks for watching. That was all.